Thanksgiving in Indiana means it's time for the IHSA Football State Championships, and we are previewing all six games. We are now going to look at Class A. We have Lutheran against Adam Central, the trilogy, Act 3 between these three teams. Lutheran has played Adam Central the last two years in the state finals, have won the last two years in the state finals. They have a 42-game win streak. Are they going to make it 43? Yeah, it's it's Adam Central's actually played them really tough the last couple of years. Last year, I think it was thirty to thirteen. It ended up, but it was a uh, you know they 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 held them their offense down, uh, unlike a lot of teams all season. You know, you look at the stats. You know, Jackson Willis has had twenty seven passing touchdowns, and last year he was over forty. Uh, but it's because a lot of teams know who he is now. <laughs> They're trying to make Lutheran run the ball a little bit more, and they've done that. Braden Hall's had a great season. He's up to almost two thousand uh, rushing yards, and their offensive line is a is a big reason why. You know, they're a big offensive line. They're like a 6A offensive line. So it's funny, uh, Dave Pash and, and uh, the Adam Central coach were talking about how, you know, maybe we should just play in the regular season. We're playing so often, they're familiar familiar with each other. And also, both teams will be moving up to 2A next year. So, you know, maybe they can meet uh, down the road in 2A. Little, little so intrigue. Yeah, so who knows. But So what, what's a trilogy is three. What's a four? Is it like a quartet or a... That's a good Frilogy? A frilogy? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. We'll have keep, to look that yeah, up. Yeah, keep going. I'll <laughs> Google it later. But Adam Central, we know they're going to want to run the ball. They're going to want to try to uh, keep the ball out of Lutheran's hands uh, as much as they can. I, I think they'll be able to do that some. I, I just, uh, you know, it's hard to pick against Lutheran. Like you said, they're going for number 43 uh, overall. And, uh, you know, I'll be curious if they can keep this run going, if they win this one and then keep it going next year uh, against the good schedule that they play. But a lot of these guys are coming back, too. So, uh, I don't think Lutheran's going anywhere. I'm going to take Lutheran to win this game, uh, 31 to uh, 18. All right, the Saints ground the Flying Jets. Thanks, Kyle. We are down to 2A. We're going to preview that one. Fort Wayne Bishop Lures against North Posey. We saw North Posey a couple weeks ago come into Indianapolis area, beat Triton Central, number one Triton Central. And now, obviously, they won a semi state. They're here in the state finals for just the second time in their history playing perennial power. Fort Wayne Bishop Lures, what are you expecting from this matchup? Yeah, like you said, it's, it's kind of a contrast of tradition, kind of a contrast of styles in a lot of ways. This uh, North Posey team uh, really wants to run the ball. They, they can not throw it a little bit. Liam, Liam uh, Stone is their quarterback. Uh, he's over a thousand passing yards, but even more impressive, he's over a thousand rushing yards. And then Jed Galvin is their uh, leading rusher on the year, and he's over almost 1,300 rushing yards. So they're going to want to you know, make this a running type of game. They're going to want to you know, make this a physical game, run the ball. And then on the other side, uh, you know, Fort Wayne Lures is more of a, of a passing team. Isaac Zay is their top receiver. Uh, he has 624 receiving yards, and Jalen White also over 500 uh, receiving yards. So, you know, Lures can move it both ways, but they're, they're a little bit more of a finesse team, passing team that plays also a very good schedule. You know, their record of 11-3 and three is not really, you know, it's a good record, but not emblematic of – They play 3A, 4A yeah, teams, yeah. A lot of Fort Wayne powerhouse teams, so – you know, and that's pretty typical of them, you know, not having a, you know, a spotless record. So I wouldn't read too much into that. Uh, kind of a cool thing. I think North Posey is going to bring a lot of people from what I've heard. You know, it's, well, now it's, that they've finished 69, you know, there you it's go. a straight yeah. shot. Finally, <laughs> we're, getting the, we're getting the fruits of the, all that labor that took 15 years to build. Absolutely. So, yeah, I think North Posey will take full advantage of that. And just, you know, the fact that they're here for the first time in a long time and the chance to win their first state championship. So, you know, I, I think they're a really well-tested team. And I know Fort Wayne lures us, too. I think this could be one of the best games of the weekend as far as the just how competitive it is. And I'm going to take North Posey to win. I think it'll be you know 24 to 21. I'll say uh, North Posey takes it. All right, thanks. And we are turning our attention now to 3A. Bishop Chatard, the machine, against Heritage Hills. And Kyle, I think Heritage Hills is going to need Jay Cutler if they have any chance of beating Chatard this week. Yeah, this is going to be a tough matchup. Chatard, you know, as we've talked about all year, normally they're not undefeated. They're, they've had a few losses here and there because of the schedule they play. This team, though, 14-0, and and Saturday afternoon they're playing for uh, another state championship. And this has been a team that, you know, all year long they've, they've kind of battled through some adversity. Injuries. Some injuries, yeah, definitely. Yeah, right. Key players, running backs, quarterbacks. Yeah, it doesn't seem to matter. They plug guys in who, who are able to get the job done. Daniel Shaw among them, who's had a great season. Talk to... Uh, uh, Rob Doyle today about uh, his his impact on the team and, and Riley Kennett's back uh, and he's he's going to be playing with a cast on like he did last year, uh, you know the same same injury to his wrist unfortunately but he he is going to be able to play 
uh, in this game. Luke Perica, another guy who's had a he, uh, been a great leader for them. Uh, Rob Doyle said one of the best he's had. I think uh, if you win, a, if you have a Perica on your yeah. team, you're going to win a state championship. I think that's Indiana law. It's in the blood. Yeah, uh, it's definitely in the blood. Heritage Hills, you know, they they have played a, a good schedule. They beat a really good Gibson Southern team last week uh, that I saw, you know, in person uh, take down Tri West, and you know, I, I kind of expected Gibson Southern to be here, to be honest with you. So, yeah, without seeing Heritage Hills, you know, I, you, you know what kind of team they have if they could get through that game. So, you know, we mentioned Jet Goldsberry, the great name of their quarterback, and he's he's had a great season for them. Uh, they want to run the ball. This is a team, this matchup happened four years ago. Chittard handled them pretty easily in the state championship game. So, uh, Heritage Hills trying to get over the hump. It's going to be tough. I'm going to say uh, Chittard. Uh, 28 to 14 in this we game. We are turning our attention now to 4A, where we have East Central versus Northwood. And in this game, we have two absolute stars in Indiana high school football with Josh Ringer for East Central and Nitro Tuggle for Northwood. What are you expecting from this game? Because um, East Central looks really good. Well, apparently uh, Northwood coach uh, Nate Andrews said he, at the uh, state finals meeting today, all the other coaches came up to him and said, good luck. So even the 5A <laughs> and 6A. So, uh, they, so they're up against it. They know yes. that. And, uh, they may play that up. He said he said he doesn't know how he's going to play that this week. You know, are we going to kind of play that underdog Rocky role? Or, yeah, to show the or, miracle speech, yeah. the Kurt Russell miracle speech, right? <laughs> so anything they can do, I think, uh, could help a little bit. But, yeah, this, this is an absolute machine uh, East Central's got going. Uh, Josh Ringer's the guy, and he's very fast, and obviously, you know, Mr. Football Candidate and uh, maybe the front runner at this point after they won state last year and could do it again this year. Uh, but they've got guys like Ryan Brotherton. They've, they've moved Dylan Maxwell to uh, from linebacker to running back, and he had a huge game last week against uh, uh, New Pal. And New Pal just, you know, they, they never get beat like that. So that shows you a little bit about how good uh, the East Central team is. So, you know, but on the other side, you mentioned Tuggle. Uh, Josiah Edmonds, another really good receiver uh, for Northwood. Their quarterback, Owen Roeders, it seems like he's been there forever, has a ton of yards uh, this season and in his career. Uh, so they have athletes, you know, so that, that kind of uh, creates some intrigue, I think, in this game uh, where you think maybe they could put up some points on, on East Central. But <laughs> East Central has been so good on both sides of the ball. Their defense even, too. is, And they beat, you know, if you look at their, their schedule this year, they beat Cincinnati Moeller. Uh, not many people do that. You know, that, that's a big-time team. You know, that's a team Ben Davis played earlier this year and, and beat them too. But uh, I think that shows just how good the East Central team is. So, you know, I, I think Northwood, you know, if they can kind of survive the wave of the first half uh, and make this a second-half game. But, uh, but I, yeah, I think you'd be kind of stupid to pick against East Central at this point. Uh, I'm going to say East Central 34, uh, Northwood 17. All right, Kyle Nedrup, not stupid. Now we're going to talk about the 5A game, Decatur Central, who you predicted preseason would be here. They're here. They're playing Fort Wayne Snyder. What made you think Decatur Central would get here? Well, I, I just thought, I thought they had the skill position guys, and, and that, you know they have obviously a really good quarterback in, in, in Polston, but also, I mean, their ability to run the ball uh, in Bododo and, and uh, Casey Berry, uh, they're kind of splitting the splitting the time at running back, and it's it's kind of kept them both fresh. I talked to Kyle Enright about that today. Uh, we're talking on Monday. We had the state finals meeting, and he's like, uh, you know, they have different styles, you know, so it's a little bit harder for teams to to match up with them because of that. And, and they really feel like they are running. You know, this is what they want to do is run the ball. And uh, Halbert Aguirre, who uh, we, we wrote about earlier this year, uh, he's that guy at fullback that, uh, you know, he's the one creating space for these guys in a lot, of, a lot of their runs. But, you know, this is a really good matchup. He, and Kyle Enright said it, you know, this is a team that really matches up well with us. Like, we're very similar in style. The, both teams have a lot of athletes. Uh, Uriah Buchanan for Fort Wayne Snyder and uh, Kron Billingsley are their, are their main guys offensively. Uh, Snyder plays a great schedule. Uh, they're a traditional power uh, in the state. So I can't wait for this game. This, this will be a uh, Friday night? Friday night at 7? Correct. So this is the Nightcap Friday night. This will be the Nightcap Friday. So this will be a lot of fun, I think. You know, this is the uh, this is the class we've talked about all year that's kind of been wide open. Yeah, I mean. Any, except for someone knew who was going to be here. Yeah, except for that. I had an, I had an inkling they might be able to do it. Uh, but they had a tough road to get here, too. Played a really, like mid-state we've talked about all year has been really tough. And I had someone ask me today, have they played only close games? Because just every game seems like it's right down to the wire. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm going to keep riding with Decatur, I think, to, to go on and win. I think this potentially could be a, a little bit of a high-scoring game. I'm going to say 31-28 uh, over Snyder, and, and uh, I think people are going to enjoy watching this game Friday. All right, thanks, Kyle. Ben Davis against Crown Point. Surprisingly to me, Crown Point's first trip to Lucas Oil Stadium for the state finals, and Ben Davis coming off that dramatic big win over Center Grove, knocking off the three-time 
state champion Trojans, so we will have a new champ in 6A. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting matchup between a team that we kind of expected to be here in Ben Davis and, and maybe a team we didn't in Crown Point, but has been building the last a couple of years. They were undefeated last year uh, during the regular season, lost to Lafayette Jeff, again, do it again this year, and then beat Westfield. And really, I think, uh, kind of surprised some people Friday night, but that score was 17 nothing at one point, and they end up winning in double overtime, beating a really good Westfield team, and, and uh, you know, I think that earned them, you know, kind of opened some eyes to maybe what they're capable of. Larry Ellison is their running back who, who has carried the ball more than 30 times in the last two games, and uh, they kind of rely on him to do a lot uh, for them offensively. Ben Davis, on the other hand, you know, you go down their stats, I mean, it's almost like pick your poison. I mean, they have so many weapons on offense. The defense has been playing really well. Other than a little span against Center Grove where, you know, they got it going, you kind of expected that well, to happen eventually. Center Grove showed that, champ and you wrote about this, they have a championship medal for a reason. They've won three straight state titles because they're good and they know how to win. The fact that Ben Davis was able to push back after that push by Santa Grove says a lot about the Giants. It does. And I, I think that kind of, in the, in the tournament run they've had in, as a whole, you know, yeah, beating Brownsburg, Brownsburg, you know, beating uh, Center Grove, beating Cathedral in a game that went right down to the wire. And uh, they can thank uh, Zane Skabinski, I think, for that uh, dramatic hold that he had in that, in that game against, uh, uh, on Friday night against Center Grove. But, you know, I just think at the end of the day, Ben Davis is going to have too many weapons in this game. I think offensively they're just going to be a little bit too good for, for Crown Point. I do think Crown Point is going to be able to put some points on the board here and there, but I'm going to say Ben Davis 37, Crown Point 23. All right, Russ Mann wins a state championship in his first season as coach of Ben Davis.